Hi everybody, welcome, welcome. Please leave a comment, say hello if you like. We'll get started here shortly. All right, one viewer. Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to say hello, say where you're from, if you want, if you have any questions. Did any of you watch Chef, A's, Chef AJ's interview with Dr. McDougall just now? I was watching that right up till the end. That was very interesting. He's all excited again, feeling better than ever. All right. So today we're going to be making zucchini bread. It's on page 171 of the Straight Up Food Cookbook. If you want to follow along in the cookbook, it's also on the website. And I put a link uh, at the top there if you want to follow along on the website. And I don't see, oh, there's a, there's a comment. Hi, Brenda. Good morning to you. Oh, Brenda Baker, hi. Good morning, sunshine. Hi, Regine. All right, we'll just let a few more people get in the room and then we'll begin. Hi, Dora. If you guys have any questions that pop up uh, during the class about this recipe or anything about plant-based eating, uh, feel free to leave a comment. And also feel free to share this live video. Uh, to other people who may find it interesting or entertaining. Hi, Sue. Hi, Jill. Spain, yes. Hi, Nancy. Nancy says, I just made your quinoa polenta for breakfast. Ooh, yummy, yummy. I haven't made that in a while. Hi, Susie. Susie from Washington. Um, yeah, if you guys need to cut out early, that's fine. This will be on YouTube and Facebook after the live class is done. So no worries at all. Hey, Judy from Michigan, who says she loves my cookbook. This is my cookbook here. I know most of you already have it or know about it. So thank you very much for that. Hey, Daryl. Okay, good, good. So welcome again. If you've never attended one of my live classes, I will get into making the recipe and then periodically I'll check my comments uh, to answer your questions as they come up. And yeah, that'll be fun. And as I mentioned before, this is my one and only cookbook, Straight Up Food. And I didn't open it to a picture because this recipe does not have a picture in the cookbook, but a lot of the recipes do have pictures, a lot of full page pictures. This lies flat because it has a spiral binding. Love that. If I make more cookbooks, I'm definitely going to do that again. I am going to make another cookbook. Um, so yeah, it's hardcover. It's just a really sturdy, useful book and it's pretty, pretty and practical. If you don't have one and you're interested in picking one up, um, it's on Amazon, it's on my website if you don't do Amazon, and it's also in digital format if that's what you're into. So, so today's recipe is on page 171 of the cookbook and then it's also on my website at straightupfood.com and I put a link there in the description for this video. All right. Hi, Laura your book. Thank you so much. If you bought the book and you like it, feel free to leave a brief review on Amazon if you'd like. That always helps me out. Hey, Tammy. I can use some calabaza squash to make this. Yes. Hi, Martina. All righty then. So let's get going. I, you would think I would have all my recipes memorized at this point, but I don't. So I always have them printed out here just to refer to because I want to get it right. Sometimes I think I have it memorized and then later I realize I didn't. 
So the first step of the zucchini bread, so let me back up a sec. So all of my recipes are 100% plants, no added salt, no added sugar, no added oil, and also gluten-free. So when it comes to baking this way, it's, it's a little bit different than traditional because we're not using the eggs and the butter and the oil and the refined white and brown sugar. So there's, this is a different, different um, animal in the ingredients that I use, but the final product is just amazing. Amazing, this is such a good bread. This bread can be made in a loaf pan, which is what I'm gonna be using today. You can make it as muffins, you can make it as in an eight by eight inch cake pan. It's very versatile. Okay, so the first thing, step one in the recipe is to soak the dates in some non-dairy milk. And I already have that going here. This is seven ounces of dates in one cup of non-dairy milk. The, the dates have been pitted and I didn't get those out. Let me see here, here, here they are. So I've never bought this brand of dates before, but this is what I'm using. And you just want to make sure that you, this is what they look like. They're not a dried fruit. They come off the tree like this. They're kind of soft and squishy. And they do have this very, very hard pit in them. So you want to make sure that you get the pit out. Any, any technique that works for you to make sure that that pit is out, do that. What I do is I line up all the pits. If it says, you know, if I take out 12 dates, then I'll make sure I have 12 pits. Just so one doesn't end up in my Vitamix later and it's, you got to stop and get it out and it's a big pain in the butt. If you do buy the smaller um, Deglet Noir dates, because those are easier to find pitted, go ahead and cut each one in half just to make sure that they got that pit out because sometimes those machines miss the pits. All right, so this is one cup of non-dairy milk with seven ounces of dates. Now in my recipes, I always list the ounces for the nuts, the seeds, and the dates. And if you don't have a kitchen scale, I highly recommend it if you're wanting to be precise. I use this very much. And then I also have another one that's like a bowl scale because dates come in different sizes, just like nuts and seeds, so it's good to have that more accurate weight measurement, the ounce measurement. If you don't have a scale, I always give the amount in dates, 11 to 12 medjool dates or 12 to 24 of the smaller dates. All right, and then the non-dairy milk that I'm using today is my favorite West Soy Organic Original Plain Soy Milk, but you can use any non-dairy milk that you like. This is a, uh, soy milk is kind of a high fat non-dairy milk, so it, it makes this a little richer. All right, and then I haven't added my vanilla yet. This calls for two teaspoons of vanilla extract. If you don't want to use extract, you can just use one vanilla bean, the seeds from one vanilla bean. And of course, I'm using my magnetic measuring spoons here that I just love. And these are on my store, by the way, if you go to my website, straightupfood.com. Um, you'll see all my favorite kitchen tools. Yeah, it's all there. So we're going to go one. And I actually soaked these dates overnight because they were quite stiff. Sometimes you get them and they're really soft and you don't really need to soak them. Other times they're very kind of dry. So these have been soaking overnight and we'll come back to these in a little bit. Alrighty, so step number two is we want to get our dry ingredients together. And let me just check the comments to make sure um, it's kind of early for questions, but you never know. Hey, Stan. Hey, Dora. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Teresa from Rio Vista. That's close to me. Hey, Laura. All right. So now we're gonna get our dry ingredients ready. And if you've watched my videos before, used my recipes, you know that I don't use store-bought flour. If I want flour, I just make it myself in the good old Vitamix, because it works like a charm and it only takes seconds. And then I don't have all this flour sitting around in my house. Um, if you do buy store-bought flour, one tip is don't keep it in the refrigerator. Keep it where you keep your potatoes in the dark, cool place. It will last longer. But I think 
baked goods taste so much better when you grind your own flour. It's just like when you use um, whole nutmeg or whole uh, cumin seeds and you grind them right then, it's just going to taste better. All right. This will still work with store-bought flour. It's just not as good, and it's going to be a little uh, wetter, moister. All right. But try this first. This works great. So this is one and a quarter cup of, let me double, double check that, yes, yes, of old-fashioned oats. I'm going to put in there. And these are the oats that I'm using today. And it's funny because during the uh, pandemic, all the bulk food stuff is no longer. They're pre-packaging it for us. So um, I just tried these early on and I always bought bulk stuff. And I don't, I'm not plugging Bob's Red Mill here, but these taste so much better than bulk. I don't know how they can, how there can be such a difference with oats in the bag um, versus the bulk, but I like these. All right, and then we're gonna add three quarter cups of millet. Now, one of the reasons I use millet is because it's gluten-free, and the place where I teach every week, True North Health Center, they are gluten-free, salt, oil, sugar-free, 100% plants. So that's why long ago when I started teaching, I was exploring different grains instead of wheat, and so oat and millet I use quite a bit. And millet is also great because it's got a, even when you grind it in the Vitamix, it still has a little texture, kind of like cornmeal. And it just is so good in this recipe. If you just had all oats, it would be a little too gummy, I think. So mixing flours is a really good idea. If you don't have millet, try to find millet for one thing. If you just can't find it and you want to make this anyway, you could use some cornmeal. Um, yeah, so this is three quarter cup. And you can grind these both together, no problem. Now the, the harder, coarser grain is the millet. It's like little, little rocks. So you wanna grind it a little longer than you think is necessary. So you might look at it and go, it's done. Just give it an extra 10 seconds. Um, all right, here we go. So there it is. Doesn't that look like flour? So easy. I don't have a grain jar for my Vitamix. I just use this basic jar and it works just fine. So at this point, I will take some between my fingers. And if it has a little bit of grit, that's good. If you can still see the round or partial round of the millet pieces, give it another grind. Because ideally, I think it's better if that millet is ground up. Sometimes I've seen people make it where the millet is, still looks pretty whole. And um, that's not quite what I was going for. It, I think it'd still work, but it, give it that extra little grind. Okay. I also like millet because it's pretty, it's got a pretty, uh, it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it, like quinoa, like buckwheat. Those things are, have, pretty strong flavors on their own, and especially when you grind them, they have a distinct flavor, but millet doesn't, so it's very nice. All right, so we're gonna add to our dry bowl here, one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm just using your standard baking soda and baking powder today. I do have on order some sodium free of both by the company Energy, uh, but it hasn't come yet. So if you're really trying to bring your sodium down, look on my website, you can see the Energy brand of uh, baking soda and baking powder. All right, we're gonna put in a half teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon,
Then we're going to do a little bit of nutmeg. You can buy your nutmeg pre-ground, in which case it's going to be a little stronger flavor. I love the whole nutmeg. So this is what a whole nutmeg looks like. It looks like a little rock and it's as hard as a rock. So in order to grind it, you need to use your microplane, which is just a very small tooth, very sharp, fine grater. And we're going for about a half teaspoon. I'm going to grind it right onto my cutting board until I think that looks like a half teaspoon. And to pick it up, you can use the edge of your knife, but I like using my bench scraper. There we go. So I am going to get my whisk. So that's all the dry stuff. And we just want to whisk it together. You can use a fork if you don't have a whisk, but a whisk is really perfect for this. And the reason we do this is we want that baking soda and that baking powder to get evenly distributed because it's important. It's what makes the cake or the bread rise. All right, so we'll come back to this. And step three, we're gonna hold off while we prepare our walnut. And let me check my comments just to see if you have any questions here. Um, do you, Marie asked, do you have to special order the Miller regular supermarkets in my area? Oh, the millet don't carry millet. You can order it online. Um, I find it in the grocery stores around here and I, Bob's red, Bob's red mill is pretty everywhere. It seems to me here anyway, in California, um, or you can order it online. I also eat this for breakfast. I like a hot porridge every day for breakfast. So I'll do quinoa one morning, millet another morning, then I'll do oatmeal, then I'll do buckwheat, then I'll do brown rice. So I like to mix it up every day. So it's just good to have millet on hand. Um, hey, Laura, howdy from Texas. Okay. Can you use sprouted oats? I think so, Krista. I don't know, I've never used sprouted oats, but when I've seen them in the uh, bulk section, they look just like regular oats. Um. <laughs> hey, Dora. Okay, so moving on. So I'm the kind of person that loves nuts in my brownies, in my cookies, in my muffins, in my cakes. I love nuts. And I know there's some people out there that do not like nuts. So just leave them out if you're that person. I'm going to use walnuts today. If you want to use a different kind of nut, like a pecan or a sliced almond or something, you could do that. But I think walnuts and zucchini bread, they just, mm, they go together. So I haven't chopped these yet because I just thought I would show you how I chop them. For this, I don't chop them too small. I want them kind of chunky. That's just my preference. You can chop them as small or as big as you like. But I like it when I'm eating a cookie or a a muffin or something, and I come across a nice big chunk of walnut. Okay. So we're getting there. There's the black sheep walnut. Okay. All righty. All right, so that looks about good. I'm not gonna go any smaller than that. And um, nuts and seeds are higher in calories, certainly. So if you're trying to watch your calories, you could leave them out or put less in or just put them on the top. But I eat baked goods so seldom that I, I throw the nuts in. I don't worry about it. Um, but everybody's different. All right. And then next we are going to get, let's go ahead and get the pan ready. I'm learning not to prepare, pre prepare, pre chop, pre do everything because people like to see how it's done. So um, I'm going to line my loaf pan. And as I said at the beginning, I'm going to use this loaf pan today, nine by what is it? 
I had nine by five by three. This is just your standard loaf pan. This brand is Baker's Secret. It does look like a nonstick pan, but I always line mine with parchment paper anyway. And um, I'll tell you more about that in a bit. Um, if you have a silicone pan like this, you can use that. I find that when I'm doing big, thick, heavy sweetbreads that I like the metal pan. It seems to conduct the heat a little bit better and helps assure that it becomes, that it's done in the middle and not kind of too soggy. But I do use silicone muffin pans sometimes. Um, what else do I use? But mostly I just use the metal or the ceramic and then I put the parchment paper in there. And I didn't get my scissors out. So I showed this last week when I made, oh, cornbread. So similar idea. You want to put your pan in the middle and take out enough to go up the sides, all the sides as well as the bottom. Now this is not going to be enough for the sides. So I do end up wasting a little of this, but I want to make sure it goes up all the sides enough. Okay. This is pretty easy to find. It's near the aluminum foil, the saran wrap. Um, they do sell this with, it's just sheets already cut. I don't like that one. I like to cut my own lengths. All right. So there's many ways to do parchment paper. This is my favorite way. So just fold it in quarters. I'm looking at my cutting board and it's all, it's all funny colored. I think that's because of the dates I was cutting earlier. I didn't do a very good job of washing that. Sorry. All right. So this is the center where it's all connected in the middle. And we're just going to eyeball this into the center of our pan. There you go. Hold it down with your thumb and then press your fingernail fingertips into the corner and along the edges. Ooh doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Keeps moving. All right. Mm, 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 mm. And now we can see that indentation. And I'm just going to trim a little bit away. Um, and I'm going to do the curve. So it's a little cleaner. And then I'm going to cut into the corner through all the layers. Open it up and then just press it in. Okay. And there you go. Nice. If there's a little bit hanging over, that's fine. Later after it cooks and bakes and comes out and cools in the pan for about 10 minutes, then I will lift it out and put it on a cooling rack. All right, so that's all ready to go. This also makes it really easy to wash your hands afterwards. It's just, it's just a dream. So the reason we're doing this is because I'm not oiling or buttering my pan and flouring it like I used to do in the old days. Um, Okay, so we're going to set that aside. I'll just check my comments here. A silicone loaf pan saves you the expense of parchment paper, but it's true that the baked goods taste somehow better in the traditional ones. Love your show. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I guess this is my show. I should get a proper name for my show, the Straight Up Food Show, I guess. Hello from Canada. Hey, Deborah. Yeah, Laura loves the nuts too. It seems like you're a nut lover in the baked goods or you're just not into the nuts. I also know people who are not into cooked raisins in their baked goods. I love them. The more stuff, the better. Okay. Hey, VG. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Millie. Where do you buy your nutmeg? Good question. 
thanks for reminding me because I always like to touch on my spices. I get, let me grab this one just to show you. I get all of my spices at um, Savory Spice. We have two spice shops around here and Savory Spice is the one I tend to go to most often. They have more organic dried herbs and spices and they also have a lot of salt-free, see, salt-free um, blends. So if you're missing your salt and you want to uh, blend to put over your food instead, you can go to the spice shop. And you're always going to get more, um, more fresher, more flavorful spices when you go to the spice shop. You can also order them online. But I just love going to the spice store. It's like kid in a candy store. Um, and that reminds me, I, I thought I would show you guys my little... Uh, this is what I usually take with me when I teach classes, just to give people an idea of the different things that you can shake on your food. This has nothing to do with zucchini bread, but since it came up, um, these are all salt-free. So Renaissance Gardens, what's in that? Uh, red bell pepper, toasted onion, tomato powder, shallots, celery flakes, minced green onion, black pepper, spinach flakes, spices. I always wonder why they say spices at the end. Those are all... Why don't they just say what the spices are? Anyway, so that's one idea. Chimichurri, dry marinade, salt-free. Sometimes I use this in my, if I just put a can of black beans heating up for tacos or something, I'll put some of this in it. It just has a bunch of stuff in it and no salt. That's a good stuff, like a Mexican seasoning. This is a onion and garlic table side sprinkle. This is just straight ground sumac berries. If you are missing salt, get some sumac berries. It's just a berry that they've ground up into, can you see that? It's kind of a red powder. Citrus pepper seasoning, salt-free. And then let's see, this is just an all-purpose salt-free, which you can find something like this at most grocery stores. And what does it have in it? It's got a lot of stuff in it. But it is salt-free if that's what you're looking for. Hey, Annette from Canada. I love my Canadians. Next to the US, I sell most of my books in Canada. So thank you, Canada. And after Canada, Australia. Do we have anybody from Australia watching? Um, if you're from another country, definitely say hello. We like to hear from you. Um, all right. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Regine says, I will use my powerful spice grinder to grind the millet. OK. My Cuisinart robot is getting tired, and I don't have a high-power blender yet. Yeah, whatever you have to do. I wonder if you could do millet in a, um, grind millet in a, um, what do you call those, mortise and pestle? I wonder if that would work. Okay. <laughs> so, Millie, yes, that's where I buy my nutmeg. That was my long answer at Savory Spice. All right, moving on. So the next thing we're going to prepare is our zucchini, which I have not grated yet. I'm sure everybody knows how to grate zucchini, but I wanted to show you these beautiful zucchini that my neighbor brought over for me because I told her, or I asked her if she had any zucchini in her garden because I was doing this recipe today. In exchange, she will get a loaf of zucchini bread. Not a bad deal, right? So thank you, Shelly, for the zucchini. It's so great to have a neighbor that has a garden and who brings you things. I love it. All right. So we're going to cut the end off. If, and I'm just going to use, you know, I love my old tools. I don't know where I've got this, I, where I got this. I've had it forever, and I just love it. And I'm just going to use the big holes to grate this. If you were to use the small holes, I think the zucchini would, you wouldn't be able to see it as well. It would just kind of disintegrate and disappear in the final loaf. 
this is a good workout. Okay, and I'm going for about two cups. And it goes pretty fast and zucchini is very soft. And I bet this is gonna taste just so much better since it's homegrown zucchini. Does anybody know what, does this type of zucchini have a name? This striped kind? I wonder if you could just use that yellow summer squash too. Probably. I think it tastes pretty similar to this green stuff. All right. We might have enough there. Let's get our measuring cup. Now this recipe and all my recipes don't call for any oil. So when you put in carrots, like a carrot cake and zucchini, it helps keep it moist without the oil. And the dates kind of help that too. And the soy milk, since it's kind of higher in fat. Okay, I think we need a tiny bit more. You know, I love this recipe around the holidays as well, even though zucchinis aren't in season like then, but to give away as gifts or to give a half a loaf as a gift. People love that. Okay, oh, that's probably too much. All right, that looks like two cups. So I think we have everything prepared. And let me just wipe this off, keep my area clean. Okay. All right, so we, let's see, let's see. The next step is we are gonna grind our dates and milk. Thanks, Deborah. It's Italian striped zucchini. All right, that makes sense. Could use a coffee bean grinder for the millet. I've never done that, but I think it would probably be fine. Yeah. Let me show you the blender that I use, uh, my small blender that I use for many things. I use this all the time. This is my Tribest personal blender. So if you're not ready to invest in a big blender like the Vitamix, which could cost like anywhere from four to six hundred dollars, and you can get refurbished ones as well. I have this small Tribest personal blender, which is on my website store, and it comes with small cups, these tall cups, and now it even comes with even taller cups. And then this is the blade. So I use this to grind flax seeds. Um, I could do my millet in here. This isn't quite as powerful as this, but it would certainly still work. And you can also get glass if you don't like the plastic. Uh, but this is a great product. Okay. Alrighty, so we are gonna go back to our dates. And our non-dairy milk and our vanilla. That's all what's in there. And we're just gonna blend it until it's nice and smooth. So there it is. Now we're going to pour this into our dry. Mmm, this smells so good. Vanilla and dates. Something about it. It's so yummy. And don't forget, if you don't want to make a whole loaf, you can always do a half batch half the recipe and make it into muffins and get like six muffins if you do make muffins you bake it for about 30 minutes 
instead of the 65 that this takes because this is a lot uh, taller. Alrighty. And we're going to mix this up until all of the flour is gone. go. I don't know if you can see that, but you can still see the, the texture of the millet in, in there, even though I ground it for a pretty long time. So again, grind it a little longer than you think it needs. All right, two cups grated zucchini, half cup coarsely chopped walnuts, Yummy. Now, if you get to this point and it seems just too darn thick, you can always add a little bit of milk. And it seems like that's what I end up doing sometimes. You don't want it like pancake batter consistency, but it can be a little thinner than it was. All right, that looks a little better. Can you see the difference? Perfect. Now we'll get our pan back here. And then just, let's see, do I have a, nope. I usually do the ends first because the parchment paper is all over the place, but today the parchment paper is behaving and standing up. Some parchment paper does come in white. You can get that as well. Just make sure you don't get wax paper because that is a different thing. And if you do make muffins anytime, uh, use parchment paper liners. Because if you just use the paper liners, it will stick because there's no oil or butter in here. Or you can use the silicone muffin pan and then you won't have to deal with papers at all. Okay. All right. And then what I usually do is save this for later because I'm a dough fiend and a batter kid. When I was a kid, I always loved to lick the bowl and there's no eggs in here and nothing you have to worry about. So, yay. All right. And when you get to this point, just even it out, get it into all of the corners and make sure that the top is nice and even. Okay. So pretty. All right. I'm going to put this in the oven, which is set at 325 for 65 minutes. So 325 for 65 minutes is because this is so, this is so tall. It needs a lot of time, but if the temperature were any higher than 325, the outside would get too brown and the inside would not be thoroughly cooked. So 65 minutes, we'll put it in there. Before I show you the finished product, let me just check in over here. Hey Jill, oh the zucchini is called Costata Romanesco. Oh, thank you. Uh, Regine, pardon me, what did you say about the muffin pan liner? I said use parchment paper liners. So here's one brand. 
And this is large, it says large, but that's just the regular size. So use these, this is bugging me, I have to move it. Um, use these instead of the, just the cute regular paper liners because baked goods will stick if there's no oil or butter in there. Uh, these are great though, so look for these. And then these are the non-stick uh, parchment ones because I have a little mini muffin pan too. kind of glaze? Oh, good question. It's so funny that zucchini bread doesn't typically have a frosting or a glaze on it, uh, but carrot cake does sometimes. So I do have a recipe for um, lemon and vanilla frosting. Those are two different frostings. You could put some of that on. You could really thin it if you wanted it to be more glazy. So that's in my cookbook and on the website as well. And, but it's, it's pretty sweet. You don't really need anything on it, but yeah, you could add a little frosting or glaze if you want. Um, my frosting is dates, cashews, and a little bit of vanilla and water. Recipe link doesn't work. Sorry, I'll check that when I'm done here. Um, you can go to Straight Up Food and just search for zucchini bread. Hi, Callie. I made a savory zucchini fritter. Ooh. Yum. All right. So now I'm going to show you the finished product because I got up early today and, and made a loaf. So here it is. Isn't that pretty? Is that in the frame there? So you want it to get nice and dark on the top. That's 65 minutes. I think I did two more minutes just because, I don't know, sometimes I do that. Sometimes I don't follow my own recipes. Um, and then I, cu I cut a couple pieces out, but doesn't that look nice? You see how it's cooked through? That's called the crumb. You wanna make sure your crumb is not gooey right there in the middle. And sometimes that's tricky when you have this tall loaf. So this did really, really well. And the longer that it cools, It'll just kind of firm up a little bit, but um, doesn't it look good? And there's the big chunky walnuts in there. Oof! I'm gonna eat this as soon as I get done. And I'm gonna give my neighbor the other loaf. Um, and boy, that is so yummy. And you can freeze zucchini bread as well. Baked goods freeze super well, cookies, muffins, all of that. All righty, all righty. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's the link for the zucchini bread. Thank you. Hi, Carol. Hi, Chelly. Yes, yes. Uh, lots of zucchini happening right now. All right, you guys, that is it. And if you have any, if you think of any questions later, feel free to leave them on the comments. I will be checking that later today. And that's about it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. Please share this video if you have people who might enjoy it. And again, please check out the Straight Up Food cookbook. And if you have it, please leave a review on Amazon if you have an account there. And that's about it, you guys. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye.